everybody, it's George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering all of your email questions. Uh, Rodrigo from Monterrey, Mexico says, thank you very much for answering my questions earlier. Rodrigo, thank you for taking the time to write to me. It's my pleasure to answer them. He says, I certainly want to know where to dig up dinosaurs and do you know about Sabinosaurus? Uh, First of all, Sabinosaurus, absolutely. It's a hadrosaur that was found there in Mexico. It's a pretty cool dinosaur. I saw where uh, they found something, I think, in Big Bend area, which may also reflect Sabinosaurus. So he may have been a dinosaur traveling up and down um, at one time what was the ocean shoreline. Um, as for where to find dinosaurs or we like to dig them up, that, that's always a lot of fun. There's a lot of places in Mexico where you can dig. Uh, one time I got invited to travel right across the border in Laredo and go to a ranch where they had found a big sea creature, a big mosasaur. So Mexico is loaded, but obviously it's private or public la or, or private or government land, and so you have to have permission to do that. But I hope one day you do get to experience it, Rodrigo, because I bet it would be something you'd never forget. Okay, my buddy Connor from Lexington, Kentucky. Connor, is, is, uh, his nickname is Raptor. It's what I've called him. He writes, um, A lot of things have been going on in my life as a young paleontology teacher and blogger. Yet every now and then I start to feel that I'm either not a good teacher or I don't know as much as I think I know about the subject. As a friend, do you mind in telling me whether or not I know what I'm talking about? Well, Raptor, let me tell you this. In all the times that I've been conversing with you through my blog and through your pages and through email, you struck me as being somebody who is very knowledgeable about paleontology. And I don't think you should ever question your level of knowledge, ever. There's nothing wrong with wondering whether or not you know everything. Nobody does. Uh, look, the worst thing is to ever get to the point where you've convinced yourself you do know it all. That's when you're no longer uh, involved in science. That's when you start to think you're a genius. Nobody wants that. I've studied for 30 years. Man, I still don't know a quarter of what I wish I knew, but every single day, we have the opportunity to learn more. So don't be down on yourself if you question it. Let's say you meet somebody that knows a tremendous amount about a particular subject in paleontology and you stand back and you go, wow, that person knows a lot more than me. Well, perhaps that's true with that one particular subject. I meet paleontologists all the time who can speak intelligently about a particular subject to the degree that would stun you. It's like, oh my God, this person knows everything. But then if you bring up another animal that they may not study, they don't have a clue what you're talking about. Uh, and they, in turn, may look at you and go, wow, that guy really knows a lot about X. So never be down on yourself. Enjoy the fact that you get the opportunity to learn something new every day. And every day you get the opportunity to share that with somebody else. And that's what makes paleontology so incredibly cool. Okay, uh, Abdul from ba Bandar Seri Bhagawan. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And that's in Brunei, Drusalem. And again, Abdul, I hope I pronounced all of those names correctly. Uh, I am notorious for mispronouncing things, so please forgive me if I made a mistake. Uh, Abdul wants to know, was Nano Tyrannus in the T-Rex family? Yes, he was. The, he's a member of the Tyrannosaur family. The Tyrannosaur family has Tyrannosaurus rex, Tyrannosaurus batar, um, it has, uh, who else, Despletosaurus, Albertosaurus, um, uh, Dryptosaurus. There's a whole bunch of dinosaurs within that family. Nano Tyrannus is indeed a member of that family. He is a member of the Tyrannosaur family. He's a much slender, sleeker version. He's not nearly as robust as all those other guys, but he is a wicked cool looking dude. Okay, my buddy Jordan from San Antonio. Jordan says, hey George, I haven't asked a question in a while, but I think I have a decent one here. Well, first of all, Jordan, it's great to hear from you again. And second of all, you always ask decent questions. So I'm glad to hear from you, man. He says, is there any evidence to suggest that dinosaurs may have lived in a complex social structure? Um, he said, most people assume dinosaurs to be big, dumb animals, but I disagree. You're absolutely right. They weren't big, dumb animals. Um, here's the thing. They're beginning to discover that dinosaurs show a tremendous ability of being able to interact socially. There's all kinds of new information to suggest that. I think dinosaurs were much more social than we give them credit for. We often think of dinosaurs as being dumb animals, and to me there are no dumb animals. The only dumb animal is an animal that, that um, walks into fire. That's a dumb animal. Other than that, no animal does that, so they're relatively in, in 
intelligent. They can survive in given situations. Well, dinosaurs were not dumb. I think they were social. We look at things like the ornamentation on the skulls of certain dinosaurs. Uh, Styracosaurus is an example. That really cool frill with those massive horns would have been good for defense, but they also served another purpose. They served the purpose of communication. Uh, they allowed that dinosaur to non-verbally communicate with other dinosaurs. That suggests social order. Look at the pachycephalosaurus with all the weird bumps and kotchkas on their head. Again, that's designed to communicate and that represents social behaviors. Look at uh, who else? Majungatholus. What a freaky looking dude. Uh, Tarbus, I mean, uh, uh, Carnotaurus. These dinosaurs all have things that suggest that they are interacting socially with other members of the family, and that leads back to intellect. So I clearly believe that dinosaurs were much more social than we give them credit for. All right, well, that's it for this round. Um, for any of you that live in or around the San Antonio, Texas area, my dinosaur exhibit opens to the public October 15th. It's called Dinosaur George's Ultimate Paleo Adventure. We've got over 25 life-size skeletons. We've got a huge theater, a 180-degree curved screen where you can stand in a room and feel what it's like to be in a room with a Tyrannosaurus Rex. We have something called the Hall of Skulls. There's hundreds of different species of dinosaur skulls, things you have never seen before in your life. Um, we have an air and sea exhibit. We have a prehistoric mammal exhibit. Go to my website dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the dinosaur exhibit page and you can get all the information. And that exhibit, we plan on traveling all over North America with it. So hopefully we'll be coming to your state and you'll get a chance to come see it. And more importantly, I'll get the opportunity to meet some of you guys firsthand. If you've got a question, Go to Ask Dinosaur George page on the dinosaurgeorge.com website. Click on that page. Send me your question. Keep in mind, I get thousands of questions every month, and it is just impossible to answer all of them, but I try my very best. Until next time, you guys make sure and take care of yourselves and take care of the people around you. And for you younger people, you make sure and practice your manners and practice your reading. And if you do those two things, I promise you, you'll be a success. Until next time, it's Dinosaur George saying thank you for all your questions, and I look forward to reading more soon. Take care.